Greetings, greetings, greetings straight across the earth. Greetings across the earth. Again, the extant slavery. Slavery is the ownership of a person as property, especially in regards to their labor. Now, this information is where you can just easily choose to ascertain on your own. Everybody has smart phones, smart equipment, and the internet is still available. However, I am on of some people when I read and write on the level where you know, call it societal standard. But they are highly intelligent people. And I'm like when I am on present the information that is already available. But when I am on narrate like verbalize the written word from our perspective, our point of view. Yeah. Yeah, what we call grassroots, you know? Yeah, man, let your light shine before men so they may see your good works. And glorify the most high creator, not I. Glorify the most high creator. Yeah, man. So again, we do give thanks. <coughs> we do give thanks and praise to the mystic laws of the universe and its protective functions and forces in nature that guide our thoughts and our part in our ways that are lawful, correct, and positive. We have to consistently make this effort yeah, to always I choose to elevate ourselves, improve ourselves, yeah, better ourselves, irrespective of the condition. Yeah, man, and irrespective of your situation. Yeah, man, I am on like to talk from first and experience. So when you experience what is, you know, you can truly express it from a first hand perspective, not from a book. You know what I mean? First hand. Not hearsay, not theoretically, first hand, not hypothesis. Again, first hand knowledge, first hand experience. And you have to choose for, you know, balance your energy, even when it's disturbed. And that's why I always I say, choose to live your best life now necessarily have anything to do with the material aspect of things yeah man sometime uh oh yeah develop sometime uh oh yeah learn and oh yeah literally see the growth yeah man that is a powerful thing when you know you have the power for really act. Yeah. And you choose for maintain that kind of discipline there. Yeah, in order to maintain right actions. Yeah, man, God, there's always a right way and a wrong way of doing things. 
some more time people and know say just take a moment just like oh you see the lightning flash sudden quick an instant it just take just that moment to create a catastrophic situation where you usually is permanent so we know where truly can cognize rationalize and find a logic in our thinking and our reasoning and create a balance sometime even you yourself have to stand down and say boy all when you're right if you're going to express your right it can create a catastrophic situation and show you are aware of this cognizant of this then you choose to stand down and say more oh, go easy but i know it's never what it seems i never underestimate no one i cannot afford to so i man of you always i humble myself and show respect to all ones and if there is any kind of issues i know mine i said this is the issue and after it said then it said notice has been given so we now have to give thanks always for no sir we can choose to rise above all kind of situation until we cannot so the beauty of life is when you can express yourself freely when you can choose to voluntarily restrict yourself from things where you know it's not conducive to your growth however you still have to stay prepared stay vigilant stay focused uh, our people eyes are wide open now their minds are wide open now so the adversary is loose in other earth yeah and is here to create what you call havoc. So we now have to choose for discipline ourselves in such a way where yeah, you stand out, you set apart. You know what I mean? Because people will find issues when you point out their wrongs and then can't say their wrongs as such some more time you have to collect data you have to make sure you have evidence for present say here it is but sometimes you might think you are right and you're not so when there is verifiable evidence where any objective third party can scrutinize or inspect then you can you know either validate your wrong or your right that way and this is why we have to emphasize patience going forward no it's not easy but when you live it yeah you can talk about it yeah man so again, we say slavery is the ownership of a person as property, especially in regards to their labor. Slavery typically involves compulsory work with the slave's location of work and residence dictated by the party that holds them in bondage. Enslavement is the placement of a person into slavery and the person is called a slave or an enslaved person so that is one of the ordinary definition of slavery now we have shuttle slavery shuttle slavery the slave is legally rendered the personal property shuttle of the slave owner in economics the term de facto slavery 
describes the condition of unfree labor and forced labor that most slaves endured. Later, we'll break down the definition of unfree and forced labor. Now, it's a person, noun, people, plural noun, persons, plural noun. First person noun, the speaker. Second person noun, the addressee or the listener. Third person noun, the third party or the intermediary that go in between everybody, in between the speaker and the listener. And it's a person, one of the definition, human being regarded as an individual. Here, a little example like it says, a porter was the last person to see her. And that's a man in her. So the last person, the, per, the porter is a man working as a porter. Now, synonyms, human being, individual, human being, soul, mortal, creature, creature, you know, synonymous with person, fellow, figure, personage, white, man or woman, living soul. And it's uh, the origin of this word person is Middle English from Old French personne, from Latin persona, meaning actor's mask or character in a play. Later, the very same word person would later mean human being. So we have break down the person. This is why people have problem with these words. When you say word wizardry. So when you ask a person, you have to be specific. All right, now we have artificial entities, non living entities being classified as persons now. This is why we kind of move away from the legalities and place emphasis on lawful act and conduct on the law, not the legal standard that's used alternatively as rules and regulations. Those are legal standards. Those are not law. Now we'll look up the definition of white. Let me say noun and let me spell it W I G H T S for plural. Plural noun meaning more than one whites. And one of the definition is a person of a specified kind, especially one regarded as unfortunate. And they use the word white, W-I-G-H-T, in a sentence. They said, he always was an unlucky white. Synonyms. The very word white, W-I-G-H-T, is synonymous with person, individual, creature, fellow, man, or woman. Now, the origin is Old English, white, W-I-H-T, meaning thing or creature. This is the origin of white, meaning thing or creature of Germanic origin, related to Dutch white, which one, this one spelled W-I-C-H-T, meaning little child. And German white, double I, C H T, meaning creature. So when people say white people, and then, you know, kind of degrade the term, I've never seen this definition out there. I think I used to have an old website 
where I might have placed this definition of some information because I had a lot of information, but somehow I lost that side some kind of way, you know. So people can look up these definitions and, you know, scrutinize the information for themselves. Now we say man, noun, men, plural, noun. <sighs> Man, noun, the man, noun. First definition is an adult male human being. Second definition is a human being of either sex. Third definition is a person. Third definition is a group or person in a position of authority over others such as a corporate employer or the police. I don't call it the man of the police. I'm going to call it the man. I stick it to the man. Yeah. Fourth, a figure or token used in playing a board game. When I say, yo, I play Lord, if I get some man, so then use buckle stop or whatever. So these are the definition of man. Ordinarily, and I'm said the origin, Old English, man, noun, plural, men, noun, manian, verb, a Germanic, of Germanic origin, again, of Germanic origin, related to Dutchman, German, and Sanskrit, manu, meaning humankind. So when we say man, it represents humankind, and this is Sanskrit, and the Sanskrit not derived from the Arctic people. And when them say old Germanic, I said them ascribe the English language to the Germanic people. And me have to even say me could rebut that or question that. Uh, these people have come from some location where them usurp everybody's language. Them usurp everybody's land. Them usurp everybody's culture. So you have to question all of these things. Uh, what I call England probably was Anglia. Not no wrong with questioning these things. Now we are look upon the word Indian as an adjective. First definition so relating to Indian or relating to India or its people custom or languages. Number two, say so relating to or denoting indigenous peoples of North, Central, and South America, especially those of North America. Now we we'll look at Indian in the noun form or the noun sense, Indians, plural. First definition, a native or inhabitant of India, or person of Indian descent. And they have an example of a, in a sentence form, sir. I hope this will inspire a new generation of Indians to enter the world of science. Number two, a member of any of the indigenous peoples of North, Central, and South America, especially those of North America. Again. Now we'll say American Indian definition. Well, let us read an example of an Indian in a noun form. Before contact with the Europeans, about 60,000 Indians lived in the area. I would say about 60 million Indians. Yeah. All of considering the amount of people who want to wipe out, want to get here. Now we say American Indians, the definition, member of any of the Aboriginal peoples of the Western Hemisphere. Again, American Indians, definition, member of any of the Aboriginal peoples of the Western Hemisphere. Now them say Eskimos, meaning the Inuit and the Yupik or Yupit and the 
Aleuts Ale are often excluded. So these are not American Indians from this category. Why are they excluded from this category as being American Indian? We're talking about the Eskimos because they are close, because of their close genetic and cultural relation were and are with other Asian Arctic peoples, see, because their close genetic and cultural relations were and are with other Arctic peoples rather than the non-Arctic groups to their south. Who are the Arctic people they are talking about? They are talking about the Scandinavian and the Slava, the Slavics, those very people. Again, the Scandinavian and the Slavic people. They are originally Arctic people. They are Asia at one point. Didn't have those kind of people. Simple. Now we're going to the New World Encyclopedia, and you're going to say, Hindustan, Bharat, Ranarajya, commonly known as India, or the Republic of India, after gaining so-called independence in 1947 from the Arctic British people, is a country in South Asia. The name India is derived from Indus, which is derived from the old Persian word Hindu, from Sanskrit Sindhu, the historic local name for the Hind Hindus River. So when you hear said I'm a Persian over there and thing, this is what I'm doing. Those East people in the East, what I'm going to call East Indian, is really East Hindustani. Yeah, man, and the Indus River, what I'm going to talk about is the Hindus River, H-I-N-D-U-S River, Hindus River. And if you take on the Sanskrit, which was before even for them break down, uh, these Arctic people, use the Sanskrit a lot to create and formulate their so-called languages when they are usurp it from other people. Just like when you know their origin, original tongue of Yiddish, you see them incorporated in the Hebrew language, this Yiddish tongue. So it's no different with the English where them incorporate for them ancient Yiddish and foreign tongue and use a Sanskrit and create because the Sanskritum is a language where them say our people not to rediscover only because it's one of the unambiguous languages in the earth. It's not so easily corrupted. And when you use the paleo Hebrew, you have to go back to its origin where it not have no Z in it, no Z. It not have no E necessarily per se, like that. Yeah, man. All of them vowels there, and you know. Again, we are talking about a time when man not talk as much as all we are talk now. You understand? Man never literally yap, yap, yap like how we can just come and run one out for five, six, ten hours straight. So man of a contemplate a concept at a time that was 
Yeah, man. So when you talk about ancients, you have to go back to the beginning, to the Adamatic tongue, so-called. Which language them say Adam did I use in the earth? Because that have to be the language where everybody else did I use. Until them say something up, man, people separate and everybody go and else place with them own language. And we the around you so, as a set-apart group of people. Especially we there in the West Indies, totally tucked away, separate from the whole part. Nonsense were out there until then discover we invade, pollute, and corrupt we, spoil we. Yeah, man, and it's the Arctic people do that. But then get help from other people looking like us that not originate in this hemisphere. Uh, there was a time when them not have no idea of our existence over here on this Western Hemisphere. And when Columbus discover, say, yes, we are here, I must forget it from our people, people who do business with us. Then them come and see us as noble people, peace-loving, caring, and then take advantage of that. And you serve our place and enslave us and this can be easily researched on your own time now we said 55 years ago the first modern humans or homo sapiens had arrived on the indian subcontinent of from africa so the very same Hindustani Barahat subcontinent, what I'm called India, which we know as Hindia, H I N. Yeah. So 55,000 years ago, it is written, so African was there. And that is before the Arctic people enter that location or region so salute to those africans over there the earliest known modern human remains in south asia dated to about thirty thousand years ago all these things we have to just read it because you know when it comes on to all these thousands of years i can't validate these things let them people out there about these things that them write it. We have to share it. So my people can at least get an idea of where they're going with, where they're talking about, and where they're about there. Now, what's that? The legal institution of human chattel slavery comprising the enslavement primarily of Africans and African Americans. And that's not about the West Indians was prevalent in the United States of America from its founding in 1776 until 1865. Predominantly in the South, slavery was established throughout European colonization in the Americas from 1526 during the early colonial period it was practiced in what became Britain's colonies, including the 13 colonies that formed the United States. Under the law, an enslaved person was treated as property that could be bought, sold, or given away. Slavery lasted in about half of the United States until abolition in 1865. And issues concerning slavery seep into every aspect of national politics, economics, and social custom. In the decades after the end of Reconstruction in 1877, many of the slavery's economic and social function were continued through segregation, sharecropping, and convict leasing. That are the prison system. By the time of the American Revolutionary War, 1775, 
1783, the status of enslaved people had been institutionalized as a racial caste associated with African ancestry. Now, if these people on the mainland were not considered African, why would they you know, say, put them in a institutionalized racial caste system as African ancestry or with African ancestry? Why would they do that? And we are talking about them, so the United States of America and, you know, the Britain's colony, including 13 colonies that formed the United States. And we are talking about slavery here. And then Matella said, starting in 1776, this is after the Indian Wars. God, I'm not talking about the Indian Wars, where them have from them enter in you know, this hemisphere. This is how them usurp us and tell us that we are not Indian no more, we are nigger, we are not nigger no more, we are black American, we are not black, we are blue, all kind of labels. However, most of my common people now have time. I'm going to tell you, we have a lot of people who are literally not read and write like that. But these are highly intelligent people. So give thanks when we get the opportunity to narrate these things. So when we speak out here, the receipts are there. By the time. All right. So it's a, would I talk about the African ancestry during the immediate, during and immediately following the revolution, abolitionist laws were passed in the Northern states and a movement developed to abolish slavery. The role of slavery under the United States Constitution 1789 was the most contentious issue during its drafting. Although the creators of the Constitution never used the word slavery, the final documents through the 30, 35th, no, to, through the 35th clause, the final document through the 35th clause gave slave owners disproportionate political power by augmenting the congressional representation and the electoral college votes for slave holding states. So that must uh, the creator of the constitution Never use the word slavery. But the three-fifth clause gave slave owners disproportionate political power by augmenting the congressional representation. So them take over the Congress and the electoral college votes of slaveholding states. The Fugitive Slave Clause of the Constitution, Article 4, Section 2, Clause 3, this is the United States we are talking about, provided that if a slave escaped to another state, the other state had to return the slave to his or her master. This clause was implemented by the Fugitive Slave Act of 1793, passed by Congress. So, you see so what did I go on in you know, the United States? You know that in Britain's colony, yeah, God, the very 13 colonies created that United States. And this is how them literally enslave the people. Yeah, man. deceive the people and to this day 
the slavery is still at stand. This clause was implemented by the Fugitive Slave Act of 1793 passed by Congress. All northern states had abolished slavery in some way by 1805, sometimes at a future date, sometimes with an intermediary status of unpaid indentured servants. Abolition was in many cases a very gradual process. A few hundred people were enslaved in the northern states as late as the 1840 census. Some slave owners, primarily in the Upper South, freed their slaves and philanthropists and charitable groups bought and freed others. The Atlantic slave trade was outlawed by individual states beginning during the American Revolution. The important trade was banned. The import, the import trade was banned by Congress in 1808. The earliest date the Constitution permit, permitted Article 1, Section 9. Although smuggling was common thereafter, it was estimated that before 1820, a majority of serving congressmen owned slaves and that about 30% of the congressmen who were born before 1840, some of whom served into the 20th century, at some time in their lives were owners of slaves. Man, can you imagine born in this condition where you have never seen freedom, you, you, you know? When you're born, you come see your mama a slave, and your dad a slave, and your granny a slave, everybody a slave. And you come now, so you're free. You know what I mean? Yet the enslavers is right there. I tell you, so you better don't do this, or you better don't do that. Or you better wear a dress. The enslavement is still extant when you are not free to express yourself freely without licenses. Yeah, from a slave owner. From a slave owner is the licenses. Yeah, man. Oh, let me tell you. The rapid expansion of the cotton industry in the Deep South after the invention of the cotton gin greatly increased the demand for slave labor. And the Southern states continued as slave societies. The Southern states continued as slave societies. So who were these people enslaving these people? The American Indians over there in the United States, that corporate area. Who were these people? These were the very Arctic people that migrated from their Arctic environment. Yeah, man, as land pirates. Because if they might come from the Arctic area, they don't own absolutely nothing. Yeah, man, these are basic logic, simple logic. But I guess these kind of truth offend people. Why? When it's a truth. Why? When it's a truth. You don't originate in this hemisphere, in this location. Yet, people is afraid to express this kind of sentiment. Why is that? Is it not the truth? Rebut this truth. What is your point of origin? Not here. The United States, divided into slave and free states, became ever more polarized over the issue of slavery. Driven by labor demand from new cotton plantations in the Deep South, the Upper South sold more than a million slaves who were taken to the Deep South. You hear that? Where them get these slaves from? When did they brought these slaves from Africa 
to America to enslave them like this. When was it? Yet we can show documented fact as truth. In the very 1700s, early 1800s, when these Arctic people were migrating to this American hemisphere by the millions, 10 millions at a time. No different when a lot of these Germanic people migrated to Britain. And the very same people that was in Germany fighting a war against Britain is the very same people the Arctic British people welcome within the British society. And most of them are the very same people now that exercise that oppressive, despotic nature. This is why we as a people can't say we own Google, we don't have a search engine. When them say Black's Law Dictionary, it's not a black man write, own, edit, and control that. It's just a name. The finance, the financial system that is out there, it has nothing to do with our people. The educational system and the curriculum that is out there is derived from the Arctic people. It's called a Prussian method of learning. Prussian method of learning. Prussia is a state in Germany that had a lot of intelligent people. So when them send these soldiers to war, they were so smart. When them I tell them to charge and to sacrifice them life, they chose not to. And the Prussian people lost that war and decided them off to make a change. So them changed their curriculum, dumbing down those people. This is why after that fact, Hitler could have mobilized so many people. And the very same Arctic people that control a Congress emulate that Prussian method of learning and institute it in the American curriculum, in, introduce it to the Western Hemisphere. This is why our people seem to be educated, yet it's incomplete. Because, uh, you know, them function as, you know, Illiterates, really, really. So the educational system only condition the people, it not really teach the people how to learn, how to become autonomous thinkers. You have to take on the trivium and the quadrivium method of learning for that. And then we can elevate to even the mathematical, gram, you know, grammatical structure. There is so much alternative out there we can bring, get us a clarity within communication. A lot of problems start with miscommunication, wrong communication, or no communication. So even when we can communicate, we have to have clarity. Because you can't communicate with a man with, you know, not even a high school education. And you say a university graduate with all kind of doctorate degrees. And a man where you talk to 
totally clueless about the words you choose to use. How are you gonna get anywhere? If you now gonna try bring that man up to your level by giving him the definition and the meaning of the words being used so he can gain clarity, then what is going to happen? Miscommunication, misunderstanding, misrepresentation. So without clarity then, you know, confusion bound for CP. Yeah, man. So that's so the United States. <laughs> the total slave population in the South eventually reached 4 million. Where them get 4 million slaves from? These are the people that was already here, my people. This is why I say when I hear them talk about African, why you think them call you people African-American? You are the Africans they are talking about. They're making a claim saying, hey, that we are too many Africans on the mainland there. So when you're saying you're Indian, these people have it documented that you're what? African-Americans. This is why I say rebut these claims, man. Waste time when we are trying to fight each other, even though it's our nature for go back and forth like that. But not when, you know, there's a big old elephant that is the issue, and we ignore it. We can't ignore it anymore. It's like we're on the island here, and we have some politicians other than haunting here on the island. And we as a people can do absolutely nothing about it. Why? Because them said they are the elite. They are immune. They are gods here. And the popular should bow down and worship them. This is what we are experiencing on this island. Yeah, man. And we have a governor general that totally ignore the plight of the people. Totally ignore the plight of the people. So the executive office take control over the military and the police department. This is why I was say slavery is extant, because if I man is not free to travel, exercise my fundamental right of movement, freedom of movement. And a crown agent can stop me and say, I must contract with this crown. I must contract. Then I compel you to enter into some licenses contract with a foreign enemy, a foreign state, a foreign crown in my own land. This is why I know there is no justice to be had. Not locally anyway. This is why we'll have to go internationally. This is why we'll bring our information public. This is our advocacy. It's not for the likes. It's not for no views. This is our truth. We are livid. We are experience it. We are express it. This is our truth. Document form as certified fact. Yeah, man. So it's a, uh, as the United States expand, the Southern State attempted to expand slavery into the new western territories to allow pro-slavery forces to maintain their power in congress you hear that the, the pro-slavery forces had power in congress when then they take over the congress and and, and you know all hostage the southern states the new territories acquired by the Louisiana Purchase and the Mexican Secession 
were the subject of major political crises and compromises. By 1850, the newly rich cotton growing South was threatening to cede, to secede from the Union, meaning to cut away from the Union, and tensions continued to rise. Bloody fighting broke out over slavery in the Kansas Territory. Slavery was defended in the South as a positive good. You hear that? Slavery was defended in the South as a positive good. And the largest religious denomination split over the slavery issue into re regional organizations of the North and South. So this was when Northern and South take on form, like the Union and the Confederacy. When Abraham Lincoln won the 1860 election on a platform of halting the expansion of slavery, seven slave states seceded, seceded, seceded from to form the Confederacy. Shortly afterwards, on April 12, 1861, the Civil War began when Confederate forces attacked the U.S. Army's Fort Sumner in Charleston. <laughs> so I guess that the Confederate among them from the South start the war and attack Fort Sumner in, a, in, a, in a Charleston. Interesting. South Carolina. Four additional slave states then joined the Confederacy after Lincoln. On April 15, call for it. the response call of the call for it in response call of the militia to suppress the rebellion. So you see, I'm start the war in South Carolina. And the Confederate, the slave owner, them first attack the union force the north you know <laughs> during the war some jurisdiction ab abolished slavery and due to the union measures such as the confiscation act and the emancipation eman emancipation proclamation the war effectively ended slavery in most places after the union's victory the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution was ratified on December 6, 1865, prohibiting slavery and involuntary servitude, except as punishment for crime. I think the people are need for find a copy of the 13th Amendment as it ratified. Uh, usually them hide certain information from the common populace. You have to dig deep to find the information when necessary. So again, would I share them information here? Cause we have some common people where not really, you know, comprehend the facts. Uh, yeah. The very America where everybody I talk about. With all of the big bright lights in the New York City and all of them things there. You know, the Arctic people come and rearrange and change that place. Totally usurp and take over the people and place, our place. You understand and show them come in and wipe out so many people. The ones them where them catch and bundle up in a 1776 and create them slave colonies. By this time, most of those people dead out. Them history and them story dead out. So them lost calling themselves. Them are African in a conscious community and them are North African, Maroon and Moors. You understand? And all of these fictitious labels. When they are the American Indians, Mary Indian, these are the people. You know what I mean? Non-Arctic people sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction sometimes the truth may seem offensive but rebut 
the truth so we can learn. Say it's not so and present the evidence. Uh, we in a race is here, but we like clarity. I understand. And in an effort to bring clarity, we share information. And our island is not immune. Most of the people them were a govern our island, them foreign to us, them just look like us. But most of them mama a foreigner, them papa a foreigner. You understand? And them they as plant. Yeah. And they as colonizing oppressors as occupiers. And them sit down upon the economics of this island nation. Them sit down on the bureaucracy. Them sit down on the politics of this island nation. Check most of them route. The ones where are not foreigners come out of some orphanage home. Them now have no route. You understand? And when them create children, these children come up into the very same political system, becoming so-called leaders. And when they check the foundation, it's just that shallow. This is why them behave that way, spoiled in office. Yeah, them immune to everything, including unaliving people. It means absolutely nothing to them. Why? Because themselves they are immune. They will always get away. But I say, your time is coming. Uh, one thing with truth and uh, one thing with justice. It might be slow, it might be late, sometimes it takes long, but when it's sure, ask Puff Daddy, ask these cross dressing people out there with all these millions. Yet, law and justice I hold them accountable. Law and justice I hold them accountable, not the police. You understand? Laws that are on the books and are in place. And the justice that follow. So irrespective of what going on out there, we have to do the best what we can do. To become much better man and woman in this earth. Not necessarily persons, God. The persons is just a persona. A person is just a mask. Or a mask of an actor. Or an actor in a play. That's why them say person, persona. We like to say the man or the woman, that's more specific. And tell me where any one of these people can claim jurisdiction over the man or the woman. They cannot. It's impossible unless they created that man or woman and professing themselves to be the almighty God, the creator of the boundless universe. Yeah. And they are not. So we have to challenge them jurisdiction. We have to challenge them authority. God, they must impose slavery upon all of us. It's not just me. It's on all of us. I just choose to free myself and express it. You can do the same. So free will exercise. Choose to be free. Salute again, free people out there. Complete gratitude for the time. Complete gratitude for the patience as we yourself learn to exercise patience. Yeah. Give thanks out there, people. Stay bold. Stay free, stay firm, and stay strong.
salute to I set apart organization, set apart society, set apart association, a walk in their nation, sovereign in our capacity. We are a sovereign, united state of being. This is who we are as a people. Salute. Ha, <laughs> ha,